welcome to session two of your opulent self my god what a session we had yesterday wasn't it incredible absolutely incredible thank you thank you for joining us i hope that you've got your workbook and i hope that you've been doing the homework so we are going live in two groups so i hope joe that you can cope and you're going back and forth um, because uh, I'm not sure if I could see all the comments um, from both of the groups in front of me. So thank you, Joe, for doing an incredible job. Welcome, everybody. Um, I would suggest that you click the link above so that when you do comment, I can see who you are um, and who is ready to get started, who is ready for session two. I'm telling you now, if you open up to this session, I'm going to share some truths some truths about yourself that you may have heard before or you may not have. So these new ideas of you are extremely powerful. For over 30 years, I was in the field of, um, you know, psychology and counselling, community services, helping people. And I always knew that every single one of our clients had enormous potential but I was frustrated because they were just going from here to here to here and sometimes they went back too and it was and we had to focus on the small steps and the reason why is because psychology as incredible as it is when I was studying psychology it was all about the brain and the brain is a very very powerful tool and it's a very very important organ obviously but there was a missing link and we're going to go into that missing link today it is the point of dif difference between myself and probably many many other coaches out there but for me if we miss this part of the formula then we miss you having your quantum leap and you're going to learn that you're designed to have quantum leaps so who is ready? Who is super, super ready? I can see my beautiful friend, Birgit from Munich, from just outside of Munich. Hi, Birgit, says she's ready. Joe is so ready. Adrian is ready. Hello, Olivia. Welcome, welcome, everybody. Welcome, everybody from the Millionaire Roundtable too. I may not see your comments. I know there's many, many more um, of you um, in that group um, rather than your opulent self. You might want to come into the your opulent self group. So if I can't see your comments and you are here live with me, welcome. Welcome also to our new members. We had quite a few new people join us. So for the new people, make sure you've downloaded your workbook. Make sure you show up a few minutes early every single day. And just for the rest of this program, so it takes seven days, maybe a little bit longer, I might give you some bonus sessions. Who would like some bonus sessions next week? Give me a hell yeah. <laughs> um, you know, please just commit to the seven days. Show up early. When you're here, give me your all. Open up to the information, even though some of the information is challenging. And please, please, please do your homework. I did my homework and this is probably, I don't know, the 10th opulent self that I'm running. I do my homework all the time because life just keeps getting better. So who here has done their homework from session one? Give me a hell yeah to have done your homework. Who has done your homework, their homework? Who has completed what I suggested that you do for session one? I want to see you. I want to see the committed people. Who are you? Come on. Yeah. <laughs> Birgit, yay. Yes, you've done your homework. Fantastic. Who else has done their homework here? Who has completed the workbook session, session one? Give me a hell yeah. Come on, I want to see you people. Ah, oh, looks like you're not very committed. Yes, Olivia has done her homework. All right, make sure you do the work, okay? Never undermine what I'm sharing with you. I decided to give this 
uh, this masterclass, I decided to give it to you for free. But do not undermine the fact that the power of it just because it's free. You are going to get out of it what you give. And time and time again, we see people within the seven days feel like they have had a complete transformation. So are you ready to change your life? Are you ready to have the new opulent life that you so deserve? Give me a yes to opulence. And those of you who don't know who your success advisor is, please comment. Let us know. Joe will follow that up. Joe's checking both the Millionaire Roundtable Facebook group and the Your Opulent Self Facebook group. I think I'm only seeing Your Opulent Self people here. And um, for the Millionaire Roundtable people, if I can't see you, just please drop a line. Joe will check it. If you don't know who your success advisor is, um, please let us know, okay, you have the one-on-one -on -one support for this session, you have a goal-setting strategy call, check your messenger request inbox because you don't want to miss out on, on my incredible team working with you one-on-one. -on -one. You will get some incredible results just because of that one-on-one -on -one interaction. So please do take advantage of that and let us know. So who loved session one? Who absolutely loved session one? What did you get out of it? What was your highlight? What was your highlight from session one? Let me know. Who has their, their new definition of opulence? I certainly have. I reviewed mine. I review my definition of opulence every single time. And it's interesting. It was slightly different this time. It had all the same components, but it was... It came out in a different way. And I will share my definition of opulence with you if you share, share yours. Adrian says he loved session one. And we absolutely love having you. Adrian's just one incredible person that I had the fortune to meet last week. Um, or the week, be I think it was last week. Um, and, um, yeah, so I'm so glad that you loved it. Who has their definition of opulence? Who shared their definition of opulence? I think I saw your definition of opulence, Birgit. Who else shared their definition of opulence? Make sure you share, okay? Because in what we have experienced, when people share in this community, there's a strong community that starts to form by the end of it. You didn't know each other before yesterday, but the more you share, it is the law of it is the law of cause and effect, the law of circulation, what comes out, okay? Cause is inside you. Effect is what comes back to you. Okay, so um, what you give out is going to come back to you. You want to be giving your best. You want to um, be sharing. You want to be connecting with others because you don't know where these relationships, what they're going to open up for you. So I will share my definition of opulence in the next couple of days. I would love to hear your definition of opulence. So just a quick recap from yesterday, okay? What we, what we covered was the importance of you knowing where you are at right now, even though it's uncomfortable, even though you might not be happy with your current results. And understanding where you are now and how you would like to change it, what you would love instead, because everything that I coach people with is based on universal law, okay? If you apply the laws, so, so um, Warner von Braun, who, is, was, who was the chief uh, phys physicist back in the, the Kennedy era, and he was the chief phys physicist that actually got the first rocket to the moon, okay? And he said to, when President Kennedy said to him, what will it take to get a rocket to the moon? Uh, Vic, uh, Warner von Braun said the will to do it, the will to do it. And he also said that these laws are so precise that we can time the landing of a rocket on the moon to the fraction of a second, okay? So these universal laws are so precise. They work 100% of the time. And, 
And when you learn how to apply them in your life, I'm going to go through some of them. I went through um, some of them yesterday. So please open up, listen, because as I'm speaking and giving you information, and I know I talk a lot because I'm so passionate about you changing. I'm so passionate about this information. That's why I just ask you to park everything, everything that's going on in your life, put it aside for now and just Bring your complete focus just here for the four, next 45 minutes, hour max, okay? Um, so, so, so these laws work 100% of the time and they are working in your life and have been working in your life for the whole of your life. But because we're never taught about ourselves and the power within us and how to apply these laws to our life, they're probably working against you rather than for you. I'm going to tell you one thing. Every single one of you can have an opulent life, whatever opulence means to you. And I hope you've got the whole gamut, you know, your health, your wealth in there too, not just money. Okay, money is very important and it, it, it's easy when you understand these laws, when you understand yourself, it starts to flood in. But you also want health, you want happy relationships, you know, you want the home that you want to live in, okay? It's not just about chasing the dollar and we don't chase. We don't chase because with the laws you don't have to chase. But when you start to learn how to apply them, things just fall into place. So, Yesterday, I said the first law. Who remembers the first universal law? What's the first law of nature? What's the first universal law? Who can remember that? Who can remember that? And, Joe, if there's anyone in the Millionaire Roundtable that um, has answered the question, just let me know. So what did I say? The first universal law. So the first universal law is order. Okay, look at nature. It is orderly. And Adrian, I want to see the photo of your pink lady apple tree. I couldn't find it yesterday. Could you please post that up for us? I would love to see it. So remember I said, if you have a pink lady apple seed and you plant it in the ground and you nurture it, you give it the minerals, the love, the water that it needs, eventually that seed will germinate. And eventually it'll turn into a tree. It might take a year or two. And that tree will bear pink apples, an abundance of pink apples. Now, it will never, ever, ever give you bananas, will it? <laughs> or, you know, capsicum, peppers or cucumbers. It won't even give you a, a Granny Smith apple, Right. So the DNA, the vision, the energy in that seed is just one of a pink lady, right? So what does that mean for you and opulence? Well, it means that you must know what it is that you want. Your mind is a goal-seeking mechanism. And if you don't have a clear, uncluttered, very clear image and definition of what it is that you want, then your mind will think what you're focused on is its goal. So it will bring you more of the same, okay? So the first law is order. Nature is orderly, okay? So if you want to have opulence, you must understand what it is that you want and you must have a clear definition of what opulence is for you and I would review that over and over again let it go deeper okay so you have said that you've done the homework congratulations and I look forward to hearing and seeing all of your definitions Show them, share them with your success advisor. When you have that one-on-one -on -one call, share them with Joe, with Natalia or, um, you know, the person that, that you're working with, okay? They are trained by me to help you and to support you during this journey. And you may as well, um, you know, take advantage of that while you're here. So let's get into session two. So we know that what we want 
is, you, you know, is the first step. But let me ask you a question. Why is it that many times the things that you've wanted the most are really difficult for you to have? Now, you might be in one of two common categories. There's probably there's more than two, but let's say the two most common that I um, uh, speak to. So one is, yep, you know, I know everything I want eventually happens. And then when I dig deeper, you know, yes, a lot of things do happen. But then when I dig deeper, I find that the same person has wanted to have um, a wonderful relationship or they've wanted to not only have a career so they went to university, they wanted to make millions. Or, you know, they wanted the freedom to travel but they just couldn't get there, right? Every time they tried, they self-sabotaged. And then there's that category of people that I speak to that have some... I. I love to work with successful people. I love to work with people that have actually got goals, okay? So if you're a person that doesn't want to change, if you're a person that, um, you know, that hasn't got a big goal, if you're a person that hasn't had some success in your life, okay, um, that's fine that you're here. You're going to love this information. But if you really want to work with me and get some incredible results and change your life, I love people that have done things in their life already, whether it's bringing up an incredible family, whether it's being great at work, whether it's being ambitious and wanting more and, and running a business. You know, I just love people that are out there and living their life and making most of it, even though sometimes it's been challenging. So there's that other category of people that, you know, they've had, you know, a great success in their life. So they may have had great success in their business, done so well, achieved the highest level, earning a seven-figure income, um, you know, and but there's one area in their life that they're really frustrated. So, you know, they might not be able to attract that beautiful relationship or they're frustrated in their relationships or might be someone that, you know, has an incredible relationship but just can't move to the part that they want in their business. So what happens? Both of these scenarios, okay, and then there are people no matter what they try, they just can't move to, a, to the level that they want so they give up. So what happens? Uh, you know, and I'm sure you can relate to either one of those or all of those. I can certainly relate to, to you know, in my life I've had both of those. So I have, I've had quite a bit of success even before I started out in, in business. I just got into senior management very easily um, when I was in my 20s and then just kept going from there. Um, but there were areas of my life that I felt so, so, so stuck. You know, relationships were one for me. Um, you know, making my first million was another one for me. I always thought, you know, that lifestyle would be just wonderful, and it is, and it is. Um, you know, going out on my own and, and, and doing my passion, which is what I'm doing with you now, there was always um, something holding me back. Has it? Can you relate to this? Who can relate to this? Who's feeling frustrated in one area or um, many areas of their of your life? And I know from um, you know the little that I know from you, from what Joe has told me, maybe a meeting that I've had with you. Natalia has told me a little bit about each of you. Um, I know that all of you have got some level of success already you've ha achieved you know some great things in many areas of your life not just one excuse me <laughs> excuse me now um, my background is I'm from my parents are from the Balkans and when they say so when you sneeze after saying something that's the truth so it's the truth that you are all quite successful already but who here has felt the frustration of not being able to thank you, Angie, of not being able to achieve the thing they want. Let me know. 
Who here has felt the frustration of knowing that you've got the talent and the intelligence inside you, but you just seem to keep getting the same results in some area of your life? Who has experienced that? Who is currently experiencing that? Who can relate to those examples that I've just shared? I've been frustrated, Angie says. Yeah, yeah. Who else? Can you relate to that? Yes, yeah. Birgit says, yes, I certainly can. So what we're going to do today, we're going to do two things, okay? We're going to, yes, I can. Hi, Liz. Lovely to see you here. And Olivia says, yes, I can relate too. I certainly can. I think all of us can, okay? So what we're going to do today is we're going to talk about two things, your marvellous mind and why this happens, but also a part that I want you to open up to that once you understand this, anything is possible, okay? So let's start to start with your mind. Okay, let's start with your mind. Hi, Facebook user. Someone said, hi, Susanna. Thank you for sharing. Hello, whoever you are. If you want to click the link above, I'll be able to see your name. Um, so if you want to do that, just click the link above and um, and I can, I can see your name. So let me explain why this happens, okay? And I might even... Um, get some, I don't like slides. I love to talk to you. I love to watch what's happening. I love to feel your energy. And that's why no one session of mine is exactly the same because I don't want to teach. I want to tap into where you're at and feel you and feel your energy and help you break through from that that part and that's why often I don't have slides but what I might do is I might bring some slides along maybe not the next I'll see I might bring one some along next session or we can even do it as a bonus session so that you can see what I'm talking about visually but today I'm just going to talk about it you might want to close your eyes while I talk about it okay so the reason why this happens is you have many parts of your mind, okay, um, and but there are two parts that most psychologists, most um, people in 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 that understand your mind, um, uh, that are really really um, relevant. Most of them focus on your conscious and your subconscious mind. Now, as I move forward, I just want to make clear: what do you think your mind is? What is your mind? What comes up for you? If you were anything like me, even though I had studied psychology and years of counselling and blah, 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 you know, I um, went to quite a few different prestigious universities around the world. Um, you know, when people, even though I studied and studied and studied, when people asked me about my mind, I'd get confused. I'm like, well, what is your mind? And then I'd get an image of a brain right? But then I knew my mind was not my brain, okay? Well, let me tell you, your mind is not your brain, okay? They are interrelated, but your mind is not your brain. Your brain is the organ. It's a thought-producing machine. It's the organ in your head that keeps you alive. Your mind is actually not a thing. It's an energy, okay? It, it's, it's not something solid that we can, we can see, right? So that's why we get confused when I when people ask you, what's your mind? Now, you have a conscious mind and you have a subconscious mind, okay? Your conscious mind takes up, uh, so when I was at university, they'd say four to six percent. More recent studies say that your conscious mind can be only one percent. So in between one to six percent of all of your thoughts, your feelings, okay, are conscious, right? 90, uh, 94 to 99% of you is unconscious. So what that means is your thoughts, your feelings, your emotions, feelings are emotions, excuse me, so <laughs> your thoughts, your feelings, your behaviour and your results in any and every area of your life is subconscious right so you're not even aware of what's in your subconscious mind 
and automatically it will dictate your thoughts, feelings, um, uh, behaviours and your results. So you know that feeling, you know how I said earlier, earlier on when we started, you know, people, many people feel frustrated because they have a goal, they have a vision, they want to achieve something wonderful, they want something better in their lives and they know they have an instinct, an intuition, they know that this is theirs and I'm telling you now it is and I'm going to explain why it is yours a bit later on in this session. But every time they go for it, something happens and they end up here. They self-sabotage. They might get sick. They run out of money. Okay? So they, so they can't move past the level that they're at. And the reason why you can't move past the level that you're at is because of your subconscious programming. It's because of your paradigms. Have you heard of the word paradigms? I know, Birgit, you have because, you've, you know, we've had a chat about this. I know obviously all of my clients here today have. So what a paradigm is, it's your habitual, subconscious, habitual thought pattern. So it's automatic, okay? Now, Studies show today that your paradigms, your subconscious paradigms come to you in a few different ways. Some recent studies show that they are a part of your DNA. So they're passed on from generation to generation. Some studies show even during this, the, um, the period of gestation. So from gestation to about seven or eight, your conscious mind has not developed so your mind is open. So any experience, the family that you've been brought up in, um, a teacher telling you that you're not intelligent, um, you know, bullying at school, trauma, whatever, that is going straight into your subconscious. And as the years go by, you repeat that over and over and over and over again, not even realizing because you have 60 to 70,000 thoughts every single day. 60 to 70,000 thoughts. Imagine that. And most of those thoughts are the same thoughts you had the year, uh, the day before today, you know, the year before this year, 10 years before, over and over and over again. And the more you repeat them, the deeper they go into your subconscious. I remember I used to have one of my dreams and I get chills every time I think of it now was when I was in a job, I always knew what my purpose was and it's to be doing this work. I just didn't know I was going to come in this way. But, you know, I'd be listening to Bob Proctor as I was driving to work. I'd never listen to the radio. I stopped doing that. And I'd be visualising sharing the stage with Bob Proctor. He didn't know me then, okay, I was just another person in the world and I'd visualize our beautiful friendship and I knew it was going to happen I just didn't know how but I remember Bob saying and I never knew what he meant then saying that most people do not think he said 99% of people do not think and I was thinking, wow, 99% of people do not think, well, I must be in the 1% because I have a senior job. I have 150 people that I'm responsible for, you know, a budget of $9 million. You know, I'm thinking all of the time. So I must be in the 1%. But when I learned what he meant, I actually was one of the 99%. Because what was happening is I was on automatic pilot. So Sunday night will come, I would dread, you know, that feeling on Sunday night and you just dread it because the next day you had to get up and go to work. And I'd get up at the same time and feel the same way and go and get my coffee and be unconscious at work. I just learned how to make decisions or what I needed to do. I was not conscious. Okay. The real power comes when you become one of the 1% and you can become one of the 1%. What you need to be doing is learning how to use your conscious mind 
to change your paradigms. So the first step in changing your paradigm is knowing what you want instead of what you have, okay, right? And you need to move out of here into here. We are so caught up in here. This is also programmed, the feelings that we are programmed. So what I want you all to do during the remainder of this masterclass, I want you to practice slowing down the thoughts and really connecting to your heart space and understanding what would I really want. Play with that. Play with that, okay? Play with if anything was possible for me, what would I love and write it down. The way that I do this, I'm not sure, you might not hear the music, but I've got a little bit of music going. I have meditation music going all the time. I'm going to just um, put it up a little bit. This one's from Barry Goldstein. I love Barry Goldstein. So I put my Barry Goldstein track on. I put a candle on. I slow my thoughts down and I just write, what would I love? What would I love? What would I love? Okay. I want this. Duh, duh, duh. Play with it. Feel like you're a child. We are so restricted as adults. We're so nervous. We're so anxious. We have stopped playing. What is life if you stop playing? And Birget, that reminds me of the beautiful stories you shared with me of when you were a child. That's where the magic happens, right? So I give you permission and I want you to give yourself permission just for the remainder of this course that you play. Who's going to play? Who's going to play and who's going to connect with their heart and, and really connect with what do, I, what do I want? Let me know that. Let me know who you are. I'm playing. I'm going to play. I want to see who you are. So... So in order for us to change our results, in order for us to get here, me, Liz says, yay. So in order for us to, to have the dream and, and, um, and experience the dream, what we need to do is we need to change that programming, change that, those paradigms from what they have been for 20, 30, 40 years of our lives and align them with the vision of what we want, Okay. But for now, I want you to play. We go deeper into that in my 12-month coaching program, okay? But if you don't know that fundamental truth about yourself, how are you going to change it, okay? What you focus on becomes your truth, okay? You may have heard that thought energy is the most powerful energy that exists. And, it, and it's true, okay? It's absolutely true. So if you're focused on the same old, same old, same old, well, guess what? You're going to get the same old, same old, same old. As Albert Einstein said, you know, the definition of insanity is expecting something different, expecting something to change when you are not doing anything different, when you've got the same thoughts. So we need to start to change our paradigms. We need to start to change our programming. We need to start to change the way that we think and feel about ourselves. And the first part of that is clarity, okay? I'm going to go a little bit deeper about that tomorrow. I actually might bring the, the presentation tomorrow so that we can go deeper with that. But for now, I just wanted a little brief introduction. And um, Liz said she's going to play... Um, Angie's saying that she's playing and imagining and Olivia said, yes, I'll play. Absolutely, we have to play more. So that's a little bit about your mind. But let's go into the truth of you, okay? I want you all to really open up to the next part of this session because when you open up to this, and when you start to understand it, not so much here, but in your essence, that's when the miracles start to happen. That's when you start to understand manifestation because what people think is they imagine something and it's out there and it comes to them, okay? 
So let me start. I want you all to get comfortable. I'll give you a couple of seconds. Just get really comfortable in your chair. Um, you know, move around if you need to. Just make sure you're in a position where you are receptive of a powerful, powerful truth that I'm going to share with you. And I'm going to start with the question, who do you think you are? Who do you think you are? I know my clients will have a different answer to some of you new people. Who do you think you are? You might want to write some things down. You might want to share them so we can all see them. So I can guarantee if you're not a client, the first thing that comes to you is, you know, I'm a man in my 40s, I'm a woman in my 40s, I'm, you know, attractive, I'm funny, I'm intelligent, I have a husband, um, you know, I'm not intelligent, I'm, I'm you know, I, I, people love me, um, people don't love me, I love reading. Are these the, des the descriptions that have come up? What are the descriptions that have come up for you? Are you defining yourself with an age, with who, with a personality trait, with an ability? Have a look and see. Because if you are, that's not the truth of who you are. Now you are you are telling the truth, right? That's who you believe you are. That's who you have been on the physical. And yes, you know you are male, female, or you know you are a certain age. But most of those are actually labels that you have adopted and made the truth and the description of who you are based on past experiences. So, for example, you may have had someone say that, you know, when you were young as a child that, you know, you were funny or that you were cheeky or that you had a lot of energy. And that may have felt good. And because of the emotional reaction to that, you carried that for the rest of your life as, as a trait that kept you safe or as a trait that you, you, know, you thought you would be liked. Some of you may have had the experience of not doing well at school, okay? One of the things, uh, one of my beautiful, beautiful nephews, he's so intelligent, but he has dyslexia. And I remember him as a child say to me, and it absolutely broke my heart. He said, you know, I want to be an astronaut, but I know that I can't because I'm not smart enough. But, and then he said, which even broke my heart even more, but I just accept that. Do you see how labels and now he's a teenager, I hope he's not, has a, I hope he hasn't accepted that. You know, I, we've done our part to help him. But he, had, he is at risk of carrying that for the rest of his life just because he couldn't read. Yet what I said to him, that NASA actually is looking for people with dyslexia. They hire people with dyslexia, okay? So, so these experiences, these childhood experiences, for me, I never liked maths. So, um, you know, so I did not, you know, get an A-plus at maths. I could do it, but I just wasn't interested. So as a result of that, I never thought I was good at maths, and studying psychology at university, one of the major study, this major subjects was research methods and it had st statistics in there. So I didn't fail, I just stopped doing that, that subject. That's the only one that I ever got, you know, an N for, right? So, so what has this got to do with you? So these labels that you've put on yourself are based from past experiences. They've actually got nothing to do with the truth of who you are. And you've carried these labels, these ideas, just like my beautiful nephew has, okay, who's one of the most smartest people I know, right? 
You've carried these ideas for years and years and years and they've become a part of your subconscious programming and therefore the truth of who you think you are. Maybe a parent said something to you that was quite hurtful. Maybe a parent had different expectations for you. So therefore you created a description of yourself of I'm a woman that's 40 something, you know, I'm I'm funny, I'm not good at maths, um, you know, I have to be really nice to people because people won't like me, whatever it is, right? And those labels are keeping you in a self-imposed prison. Those labels are the walls of your prison cell. And the fact is that that prison cell that you're keeping yourself in has actually got the key in it. And you can unlock the key and walk over the threshold into a life of freedom. Because the truth of you is none of that. The truth of you is that you have absolute infinite potential. Think of the word infinite. It goes forever and ever and ever and ever. So just because you had a bad day as a kid in, during a maths test or you weren't that interested, you wanted to play instead, it does not mean that you can't do maths. It does not mean that you are that label. You can be whoever you want to be. Let's go a little bit deeper. Are you ready? Do you want to open up for a little bit more of you? Because if you are, we're going to go a bit deeper and you're going to discover something about yourself that will probably blow your mind. You see, those labels are often also based on your physical self. So, you know, I'm 176 centimetres tall, I have green eyes, I'm, I'm slim, I'm big, I'm whatever. My IQ is X. When the truth is that the physical part of you, although it's absolutely amazing, Although just the physical part of you, so just your pinky, right? Just pull out your pinky. I want to, I wish I could see it, <laughs> right? Okay. That little pinky, did you know that little pinky inside there, you, your little pinky has enough energy to provide the, to light up a whole city for seven days. You just in there. Okay, so your physical part, the physical part of you is absolutely extraordinary. But, but the physical part of you is less than 1% of the truth of who you are. And this is where it goes over some people's heads. So please just stay with me. So evidence now shows us something absolutely awe-inspiring about you. Most recent studies in quantum physics show that you are actually not physical at all, right? Quantum, the studies show when they look, so quantum physics is the study of the tiniest particles that exist, so when they looked at your atoms, the human atom, they realised that it is 99, hold on tight, 99.9999999999999999999999999999999999999999999999999999999999999999999999999999999999999999999999999999999999999999999999999999999999999999999999999999999999999999999999999999999999999999999999999999999999999999999999999999999999999999999999999999999999999999999999999999999999999999999999999999
is the same intelligence that has created the stars, the moon, the sun, our solar system, the Milky Way. And it is, it has created you in actual fact, it is you. So if you are 0 0.00, you are one, less than 1% physical, right? You are 99% of source intelligence. So you have the same intelligence that has created the moon, the stars, the, the, the Milky Way, the planets. You are more that intelligence than you are physical. So what does that mean? What does that mean about you? It means that the intelligence, the truth of who you are is way beyond what you've ever thought. In actual fact, if you understood that just a little bit, you'd be falling off your chair right now. Did you know did you know that without you, Tasha, without you, Birgit, without you, Angie, without you, Adrian, did you know if you did not exist, that energy of who you are did not exist, the entire universe would be out of alignment. It could not function without you. So all this time, you thought you were this, you thought you were that, you thought you were not good enough. And you've been carrying viruses in your mind that kept you limited in a prison cell. But that is not the truth of you. That is not the truth of you. The truth of who you are is beyond words. And I can guarantee every single one of you has been playing small. You've been playing small thinking that you're not worthy of it. You've been playing small thinking that it's impossible for you to have opulence to have the relationships, to have the beauty, to have the beautiful home. You've been playing small because you've been so stuck and so conditioned with your past labels. I'm this, I'm that, I can't be an astronaut because I'm dyslexic. When in actual fact, in actual fact, you are more source intelligence then you are physical and what that means is no matter where you are in your life right now no matter if it's the crappiest period you've ever met you've ever experienced i'm sorry no matter if if you are feeling s t u c k no matter if the clients are not coming in or, or, you know, the relationships are not coming in or the money's not coming in, you can change it just like that. And I know for a fact, I may not have met you personally, some of you I have met and I've absolutely loved every single one of you that I have met. And joe has been telling me and Natalia's been telling me about, about all of you that they've met. I know one thing for a fact, that thing that you really want that's deep in your heart, that thing that you've wanted for years and years, that thing that you really deeply desire but you feel like you are not worthy of it, well, I can tell you for a fact, that thing is also wanting you. It is also wanting you. But you need to be brave and you need to have the audacity 
to open up, to start burning down the walls of your self-imposed prison and to start walking into a life of freedom. You, Tasha, Birgit, Stefania, Anna, everyone else that is seeing this, every single one of you, every single one of you have infinite potential inside you. You are way more marvellous than what you've ever, ever thought yourself to be. You are the gift to life. You are a gift just by being here. And life is a gift to you. What are you going to do with it? What are you going to do knowing this truth about yourself now? What are you going to do? What do you want? What is it that you want? Because there is nothing in this world that you cannot have. Nothing. I want you all, I invite you all to start to open up, open your heart, open up your mind, even if it's just a little bit. That little bit may be all you need for right now. That little bit may be the beginning of something greater. But I invite every single one of you to open up to the truth of who you are. I want you all to watch this and re-watch this until it becomes a big part of you, a deep part of you. Because that is the difference between what I do and what other coaches do. And without that, without that basic understanding or just a little bit of awareness of the power that is inside you, you're going to keep struggling. It's going to be hard. But you have a choice. You can make that decision right now. You can make that decision to open up and decide that once and for all, the viruses in your head, the viruses in your mind, you're going to burn those walls down and you're going to walk into freedom. I thank you so much. It is my absolute honour to be in front of you all today. I would suggest that you review session one with the lens and the heart of the truth of who you are. Without you, without you, if you did not exist, Tasha, if you did not exist, the entire universe would be out of alignment I want you to review your definition of opulence I want you to review what you want from that perspective because you are here for a purpose you were not just born just by chance you are here because you are a gift you are a gift to me you are a gift to anybody that has experienced you and just your energy in this physical realm is changing the world. What are you going to do with it? What do you want to do with it? I invite you to review session one. I want you to just experience that, play with that, write it down, watch this over and over again in the next 24 hours. And remember, every session builds on the next and on the next and on the next. So I look forward to seeing you all again tomorrow. Please book your one-on-one -on -one session with your success advisor. They are here to support you, okay? They'll help you go deeper. And thank you so much for giving me the honor to be here in front of you. Let's do this. Let's take the rest of this course super, super serious. Because if you don't now, when? When will you? When will you?
Thank you so much. And I'll see you all again, same time, same place tomorrow. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Bye bye.